Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. We all know the Stanley Bailey plane, but did you know that they also made aluminum planes? <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at this. Okay, let me set the scene for you. It's the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties. Stanley is in the heyday. They are building the best planes they've ever produced and arguably the best planes that have ever been produced. And they're selling them at an astounding rate. They're making them so fast and creating so many of them that they can sell them for $4.20. Adjusted today, that's about $60, which is a phenomenal deal for a good high quality hand plane. Every couple years, they're coming out with a new type and new innovations and bigger knobs and different connections, uh, all sorts of little things that make the plane better and better and better. And they are in the heyday. No one can match Stanley. But then someone says, you know what the problem with these are? They're heavy. We need something that's lighter. And that's a bit confusing to the modern person. We like having heavy planes. We want a lot of momentum to keep them going. And that kind of makes sense to us now. We make them now out of brass. But back then, a lot of people were raised on wooden planes, and these are half the weight of their steel brothers. Also, you're talking about someone who is using this plane every day for 12, 14, 16 hours a day because they're using it for their livelihood. That can be a lot of work to move this heavy plane over and over and over again when you're used to working with a really light wooden plane. But everyone loves the modern Stanley because it's got all of these other adjustments that make it really easy. The old wooden ones, you have to hammer them into place and they're a little fiddly to do that. These are nice, they're efficient, they're easy, and if you're making your livelihood on it, that is worth money. So Stanley said, well, what can we do to make this more like a wooden plane? Lighter with all of the extra fixings on it. And someone said, well, steel's heavy. Aluminum's light. So around 1925, Stanley introduced the A series. So you'll find planes that say A and then the number. A5 as opposed to a regular 5. They're made of aluminum. They are exactly the same as their metal counterparts with all of the extra bells and whistles. All of the fittings are interchangeable between them, except the sole is made of aluminum. Wow! Lightweight, easy to use, that should sell like hotcakes. But there's a reason why the A-Series is generally considered Stanley's biggest bungle. They didn't sell as well. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Number one, aluminum is expensive, especially back then. In comparison, that jacked up the price by almost 30%. This would have cost $420. This cost $560. Yee. Nowadays, that'd be about 80 bucks, which still sounds like a good deal to us. But when you're used to buying this for $60 and then this costs $80, uh, it might not be worth that. On top of that, steel planes stayed pretty clean. The aluminum ones, though, you look at them funny and they dent up and they scratch and you've got nicks and gouges in this. I mean, they're nice because they're a little more ductile, so if you drop them, they're probably not going to break. But, uh, yeah, they start to look really bad. If you're doing a lot of joining with them, you're going to find that a lot of these have a big valley running right down the middle. And they're almost cupped out and hollow because the center sole wears out so much faster than everything else. With the steel, you can go a couple decades before you have to flatten them again. With the aluminum ones, you have to flatten them quite often. And yeah, they're easier to flatten, but you really don't want to do that. Also, because they're easy to dent up, you often ended up with nicks in the bed, and the aluminum is still harder than most all of the woods you use, so if you have a nick in this, it's just going to scratch up your work. Well, you don't really want that either. Don't get me wrong, they work perfectly well. But if you have aluminum on here, you're going to start getting these dark marks on your wood, and it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but in reality, they show up. The aluminum is actually rubbing off onto some of the high spots on the wood. Scuff marks like that just... They don't speak well about a plane. And then probably the big nail in the coffin is that in the 1920s, power tools started to become more and more available, especially if this was your business. If you were a full-time woodworker, you eventually started getting a thickness planer, and that meant you're using this less and less. It's not a tool that you're gonna be using for 16 hours a day. It's something that you use to clean up, do finishing, and well, kind of how we use it today. And in that case, you start to like having a heavier plane because it has a little more momentum. And because you're not using it all the time, it's really not that big of a problem. So the whole reason for getting an aluminum is eh, kind of going out the window. 
So for about 10 years, between 1920 and 1935, Stanley made aluminum planes, and they made them for the bench planes as well as some of the specialty planes. And you can still find them. They are pretty rare because they didn't sell very well. They sold enough to kind of break even in the beginning, and then they became a money pit where Stanley was putting a lot of money into producing them without making it back. A lot of people like the look of them because they don't rust. A lot of people really don't like the look of them because they ding up really easily. A lot of users actually inscribed their name on the side with a punch. They're kind of a mixed bag for different people. But because Stanley didn't sell quite as many of them, that means they're now collectible. Yeah, and they sell for about twice the price. Usually a decent number five that needs to be cleaned up and worked on is gonna cost you somewhere around 40 bucks, depending upon its quality. Whereas on aluminum, I just bought this one for $80, and that's about the going rate, $25 to $80, which is about twice the price of one of these. Now, the nice thing about them is they're far easier to clean up. If you need to flatten them, they flatten in an instant. There's never going to be any rust on the body. You might occasionally see some galvantic corrosion between the steel of the iron and the aluminum of the frog, um, or some of the screw connections, but actually that's kind of rare. They tend to be in pretty good shape because aluminum is fairly stable. Should you go out and buy aluminum planes? No. Uh, if you are looking for a lightweight alternative and you're working with woods that tend to be a little darker, then honestly, they're okay users. They're not amazing, but they do the exact same thing their steel counterparts do. They're just lighter weight. But nowadays, uh, people don't buy these to be users. They're, they're a collectible piece. Uh, they're, they do work, they're functional, but they're not amazing, and they're not the type of thing that's like, oh yeah, that's what I want because it's so much better. No, it's, it's lightweight, but if you want lightweight, get wood. Wood feels better, and it's just a little more functional than the aluminum leaving marks all over your work. The Stanley A-Series is just proof that everyone makes mistakes. Even Stanley, in their heyday, making the best planes that have ever been made at that point, still made some mistakes. And yeah, these are kind of an interesting thing, especially when you get some of the specialties that only a few of them were made. They can be very collectible and very valuable, but... Users, no. They're a lot of fun though, and uh, it's kind of nice to have on the shelf. It's a good talking piece. Yes, Stanley made aluminum planes. So this is an interesting topic. Uh, it's one of those things that a lot of people don't know that aluminum planes existed, but yes, they do, and uh, they are kind of an interesting topic to talk about. So I hope you like that. Uh, if you do have any interesting information on one, I'd love to hear that. There are all sorts of interesting antidotes and, and different things about it, especially because of the time period these were made. They started off in the Roaring Twenties, and then they were chopped halfway through the Great Depression. A lot of people think that it was because of the war, but it was actually in between the two wars that they were produced. So yeah. Um, aluminum. Who knew? So if you do have any questions, comments, ideas, let me know those down below. I do read through all the comments and I answer as many as I possibly can. That does help out the channel to put those in there, so thank you. As well as hitting the like, share, and subscribing, commenting. Those things really do help us. Thank you. It is one of the easiest ways that you can help this channel out. So if you like this, put a comment down below. Also, if you want to take it one step farther, all of these people over here are patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who are literally supporting this channel and keeping us going. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewers, so thank you for that. If you'd like to keep us on air and keep Keep us going, become a patron on Patreon, or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We do have special perks for both, and we do occasional uh, behind the scenes videos and things of that nature. So I hope you like that. If you do, let me know down below, and I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. The one big difference is that these were never made in. The one big difference is that these were never made in England. So there are no aluminium planes, there are only aluminum planes.